Hi, everybody. I want to thank the organizer for inviting me to this uh, talk. Uh, I'm really happy to participate in this meeting, but I would be much happier if I could uh, be there in Argentina, uh, meeting physically all of you and not uh, through the, the computer, as unfortunately we got used. Uh, the title of this uh, of this lecture is, uh, in general, is if lupus, if APL has an impact in the treatment of lupus, in the management of lupus, I think we can answer with this talk regarding mainly the renal uh, management. And for that, I start with a clinical case that I think is quite interesting and quite illustrative for this, uh, this talk. It was a 32 years old Caucasian lady. In 2013, quite young, she was diagnosed as heavy lipids on the basis of, of hemolytic anemia, arthritis, cutaneous lesion, and she has lupus nephritis class three. Immunology showed ANA, anti-DNA, anti positive. And at this time in 2013, she was negative for antiphospholipid antibodies. She remains quite stable on hydroxychloroquine, prednisolone 2.5 milligrams, and mycophenolate 2.5 grams daily. In 2017, she developed a femoral vein thrombosis. At that time, anticardiolipine and antibeta 2 gp one were positive, confirmed in a second determination, three months apart. Lipis anticoagulant was not performed because she was already on heparin. She was treated at onset on heparin and after that switched on to warfarin with INR 2.23.0. In 2018, so one year later, she developed uh, hypertension. It was in a sudden way, hypertension, worsening of renal function. She has a normal renal function before, and at that time she has creatinine 1.7 and a GFR of 65. And she has an increase on proteinuria from 0.3 to 2.5 grams. New biopsy was performed. And this is the first thing that I would like to uh, share with you regarding the management. If you have a patient with lupus, uh, who start with symptom or signs of lupus nephritis at onset, everybody knows that the biopsy is mandatory. We had to see the class, but we had to see also the activity index, the chronicity index, and all that is going to help uh, in the treatment. If after that, as this patient was stable, there is a worsening of renal parameters and the patient has APL negative, you can do a new renal biopsy or you can only change or increase the treatment. For instance, in this patient, you can increase mycophenolate from 1.5 to uh, 2.5 or even 3 grams daily. If we think that is a worsening of the class 3 lupus nephritis that she had previously. But if we have changes in renal parameters in a patient with APL positive, I think that as we said before, biopsy here is also mandatory. Why? Because we already know now very well that there is a nephropathy associated with the pressing, with the positivity of uh, antiphospholipid antibodies. And this uh, renal involvement associated with the pressing of APL is not very frequent. It seems that it's around 3% of APL positive patient, but think that sometimes, maybe some years ago, was not very well known, and may, may, maybe the pathologist didn't look for the histological findings. So this can be underestimated. Renal artery stenosis is the most common kidney complication, but we have also macrovascular events, such as uh, thrombosis and infarction, and microvascular complication that is the one uh, which leads to nephropathy. The, we started knowing about uh, APLN in the early 90s. You see here that in 1992, 
uh, Dr. Mari Carmen Amigo provide already with the first description of intrarenal vascular damage. Only in five patients, but it was like an alert uh, for doctors to, to be aware of this complication, of this uh, involvement of, associated with APR. In 1999, it was uh, Noki and uh, et al., the team of Noki, that after uh, examining 16 biopsies of patients with primary IPS, were able to describe all these findings, the same that Dr. Amigo have already described in five patients. This patient with primary APS, so we cannot have any, uh, any confounding factor because of lipids, because all of them were primary, and they described that. After that, Dr. Tectonido, Maria Tectonido, that also has contributed uh, greatly to the description of APL nephropathy, uh, described that the, it, this nephropathy is closely associated to the presence of lupus anticoagulant, that quite a lot of the patient with APL nephropathy has also previous arterial thrombosis and fetal loss. Hypertension was more prevalent in this patient, and they have also elevated serum creatinine levels, kidney interstitial fibrosis. All these factors were a predictor of a worse renal outcome, and this is common to all studies. We have here a, a study about, with uh, 111 uh, patients with SLE and APL positive, and not all, uh, 111 SLE patients uh, with nephritis, some of them has SLE patients, higher uh, blood pressure was more frequent in this patient with APL positive as well as uh, higher serum creatinine and higher protein excretion and again this feature was associated with a, a worse renal prognosis. I told you that uh, histologi more histological findings every time are being described. We perform uh, leading by Professor Sabino Sacha uh, perform a multicentric study analyzing the histological findings in 123 uh, patients with APL uh, nephropathy. And this is only a flavor, an overview of the different changes. Of course, I'm not going to go in detail to this slide, but there is glomerular acute lesion, chronic lesion, glomerular chronic lesion, arteriolar acute and chronic lesion, and arterial acute and chronic lesion. I think this is tremendous useful for us, for nephrologists and also for our pathologists. And we, we have to share with our pathologists all this that we are every time learning to look actively for these changes in the biopsy and, and, and the patient can, can receive the, the best treatment. Another paper from Maria Tectonudo is the only one that I find comparing the renal involvement in APS, in APS plus SLE, and in catastrophic syndrome. And thrombotic migrangiopathy, the acute lesion was more prevalent and catastrophic, but the chronic lesion was similar in between the three APS groups. And also the three APS groups uh, have the same clinical feature, hypertension, proteinuria, microscopic hematuria, and some grade of renal insufficiency. And I found one paper where the histological changes in lupus nephritis and APLN were compared in a grossly uh, way. And you see here, although the APLN was a small group, only 16 patients, all the, the, these described uh, uh, histological abnormalities are more prevalent in the group of uh, APL nephropathy than in lupus nephropathy, nephropathy only. We can think about uh, which are the mechanisms uh, that uh, leads to the development of APLN. I, I summarize here the activation of the complement that leads to the microangiopathy. But after that, the antiphospholipid antibodies also bind to endothelial cell receptor, and this leads to the recruitment with other mechanisms involving mainly the MTORC torque 
pathway and the development of fibrous intimal hyperplasia. This fibrous intimal hyperplasia is going to progressively obstruct the lumen of the vessel and induce ischemic changes. And why is, to, is this so important? Because this is going to be determinant to choose the best treatment for our patient. If we have only activation of the coagulation pathway, the result is going to be a thrombosis and we are going to use anticoagulation. But if we have an activation of the AKT M torque uh, pathway, this is going to, uh, to, to lead to an inflammatory vasculopathy and maybe, maybe the best treatment could be the inhibition of this pathway. If we find if we find a complement deposit, if the activation is complement dependent, this is going to produce a thrombotic microangiopathy. And in this case, probably a bulizumab or plasmapheresis could be the best treatment. So the title is APL has an impact on SLE management? Yes, because probably in some cases require a different treatment. The treatment of APL is not uh, based on consensus or guidelines, only relies on expert opinion. And we have limited evidence, <coughs> sorry, about the effect of anticoagulants in those patients without APS criteria. So if we have a patient with already previous thrombotic APS, no doubt. But if we have a patient only with APL without any other uh, thrombosis, there is no uh, a consensus. In my opinion, we should treat this patient with anticoagulants, but there, I have to say that there is no consensus. Low molecular weight heparin basis in the role that uh, uh, has low molecular weight heparin inhib inhibiting uh, the complement activation with the uh, fraction uh, C5 and so on could be a good option. And also the use of intravenous immunoglobulins or plasma chain. B-cell therapies has some results, but mainly no criteria uh, APS. And as we said before, this pathway, the mTOR pathway inhibition could be also a good option. From complement inhibition, we have mainly animal studies, but we already know that mask has been very useful in some thrombotic microangiopathy. But the animal models are quite nicely uh, demonstrated. We have also, since 2008, with animal models, but after that in, in trial with humans, we have some evidence that mTOR inhibition inhibi inhibitors could be of help in lupus nephropathies. And lupus nephropathy, and we have some cases of APS uh, nephropathy in transplantation. So patient who has a renal transplant, and after that, they develop APS nephropathy. Their serolimus has been used with very good results. So although our patient has not had a transplant or anything like that, the immunofluorescence in the biopsy so very nicely that AKT uh, pathway was activated, leading to the activation of mTOR pathway. So we treated this patient with the sirolimus, two milligrams day, plus warfarin. And 24, uh, 24 hours protein, during protein, protein, improved a lot. After six months, we have again less than 0.5. After one year, sirolimus was uh, decreased to one milligram per day, another six months, and after that, completely discontinued. And we had to say that the lupus nephritis and the APS uh, nephropathy remain in remission with a low doses of 2.5 milligrams of prednisone even after the continuation of sirolimus for another three and a half years. And we didn't see any serious adverse events. So as we said before, APL can impact in the management of SLE because some uh, manifestations require a different treatment. In conclusion, 
APL is APL M is already a very well defined entity. Clinical presentation with hypertension, with increase in the in the creatinine, with the proteinuria not in the frotic range, but a, a mild proteinuria and mild renal insufficiency. Uh, suddenly, in a patient who uh, was stable, uh, can uh, alert that something else is, is, is happening. And renal biopsia, we said, is mandatory in this patient. And the treatment option can be different from only steroid and immunosuppressive treatment that we use, or, or even B cell depletion that we use in lupus nephritis, to all these options. Complement inhibition or MTO or SC a pathway inhibition with other uh, drugs. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>